Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, I'll be continuing with the invertebrate series on the phylum Nematoda. If you know you are new to this kind of channel, please kindly press the subscribe button and put on the notification so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. The phylum Nematoda actually comprise of organisms that are generally regarded as the round ones. And this file of actually contain more than 27,000 species if, in which some of these organisms are actually free living while others are parasitic. These organisms play a critical role in nutrient cycling in nature. So, and some of these organisms actually causes various diseases such as ascariasis, the hookworm, the elephantiasis or the filariasis, we have various other diseases caused by these organisms. Some of them actually feed on bacteria, fungi, and even other nematodes. What are some of the characteristics of the phylum nematoda, or the, what, are, what are the characteristics of nematode? We know that they, are, they possess a flexible body that is often cylindrical in shape. You know that their body is actually tricoblastic and they are bilaterally symmetrical. If you look at the diagram that is being displayed on the body, you realize that they are tapered at both ends. So, these are the, they possess a body that has a cortical, an outer cover, a cortical that is relatively thick, that is produced by the hypodermis. You know that the epidermis is in Cynthia, which is actually a kind of cell that contains numerous or a kind of that contain numerous nucleus. These organisms, some of them are parasitic, as I highlighted before, some of them are free living. And as you can see from the diagram being displayed on the board, they possess a complete digestive system. What do I mean by a complete digestive system? They possess two openings to the external environment, that means the mouth and the anus, right? They lack respiratory system. We know that they lack circulatory system. We know that the majority, or they are actually sexually dimorphic, and they do not carry out a sexual mode of reproduction. If you look at the diagram being displayed on the body, they possess a structure that is called phasmid, which is a sensory structure that is present at the posterior end, as you can see from the diagram being displayed on the body. Why? So in some other organisms, Remember that the phasmid is not present in all the organisms. Why? In some other organisms, they possess a a sensory structure at the anterior end we get as well the arm feed. The diagram is being displayed on the board. We know that, already know that they carry out sexual mode of reproduction. Let's take a look at the classification of the phylum nematoda. The phylum nematoda is actually classified into two classes according to sheet in 1933. And we have the phylum, the phasmidia, and we have the other, which is the aphasmidia. Please take note that this phylum classification is based on the presence of the sensory structure in their posterior end, which is the phasmid. So we can confidently say that if the phylum phasmidia possesses a unicellular or punchline sensor that covers the phasmid that is present at the, our, the posterior end. Coda adhesive glands are actually absent in these and um, organisms. Example, we know that there are the Ascaris species, the Enterobial species, we have the Muchesheria species, we have the Necata, or even the Senorabidis species be present. This phylum possesses numerous others, just a few or some of them which is actually highlighted here. We have the Rabi Rabditidia, which the example is being displayed on the body. We have the rabbitis, we have the strongy leader, we have the example being displayed on the board, and we have the various others, and the example being highlighted on the board. The second class of the phylum, Nematoda, is the Aphasmidia, which is also regarded as for the Adenophoria. This class actually lack the phasmid, which the phasmid they have, but they possess another sense organ, or is the sensory structure regarded as what the ants feed. In this case, the ants is present at the anterior end, as you can see from the diagram being displayed on the board. The ants is actually well developed in this organism anyway. And they possess five or more oesophageal glands. 
as I said earlier, the fast meat in this organism is actually uh, absent, right? And the majority of them in this group are actually the free living species. Why, in the case of the fast meat, the majority are actually what, the parasitic. Though we have some parasitic species actually present in this organism. Example, we have the memes, we have the para memes, then we have the example being displayed on the board. Remember, the classification that we just discussed by Sheetwood in 1933 classified Nematoda into two classes, which is the Phasmidae and the Aphasmidae. All right? Now, recently, based on evolution in molecular biology and genetics, where molecular classification is being involved, the um, phylum uh, Nematoda is currently reclassified, and we know that in future, the, based on evolution of knowledge, there will also be continuous what, progress in the process of what, classification. So in this classification, which I would define, um, the phylum nematoda is divided into three classes. We have the rabdita, uh, we have the, the class enopli, then we have the class promodoria, right? So we just discussed this, which is actually uh, composed of majority of the parasitic, parasitic species that is uh, affecting human beings. We have the Ascaris, we do uh, Lubicoide, we have various other parasites being present, uh, Eterobius is being present in this group, though some of these organisms are also free living. This group has a lot of characteristics which we have highlighted when in, during our previous classification board. It is worthwhile to mention that they possess what the ace feed or the ants feed, which is located in the arterial region and is a sensory structure. Right? We also know that they have cortical, which we have been discussed before. You can see the diagram of the nematoda being displayed on the board, and you can see the cortical again being shown. Their body is cylindrical, we have mentioned before, and we know that the majority of the nematodes, or actually the nematoda, are actually unsegmented, right? We have the next class, which is the class Inopli, right? Which also possesses a well developed hands feed and a cylindrical also fragus. They have a simple and structural structure, and we have the last class, which is what Chromadoria, right? Which also has the Structure, they has the ends feed being present there. This organism actually take note that this organism they lack what the fast meat, right? The assignment that I would like you to uh, carry out in this study is take a well labeled diagram of the organism, the Ascaris lubricade a well labeled diagram and highlight the various characteristics of the nematode that you can see in this organ. In that way, you can easily relate and get to know details about this phylum. Thank you. Please, you can always support this channel by subscribing. Thank you very much.